let's talk about six items I refuse to vacuum seal. Good morning, everybody. This is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead. And over a week, I am asked hundreds of times, what are some things that you vacuum seal? Well, that's super easy. I vacuum seal a lot. Things from crackers and cookies to freeze-dried fruits, baking ingredients such as oats, granola, popcorn, rice, and hundreds of other things from cereal to flour. But this week, a subscriber asked me a question no one had ever asked me before. Deb, what dry ingredients do you not vacuum seal? Ooh, that's a great question. There are six dried food items that not only don't I vacuum seal, I absolutely refuse to vacuum seal. Today, we're gonna to talk about those six items, why I don't vacuum seal them, and how I do keep them in storage. Some I'm able to store for a very long time, but others not past the best buy date from the manufacturer. Number one, raisins. Let's get started with the very item that one of my subscribers asked about. The subscriber noticed that there were raisins in my cereal in one of my last videos. Well, the reality is the cereal she was looking at did not have raisins in. It had dried blueberries. And because they were my blueberries, I knew that they were completely dried and crunchy. That's what you want when you are vacuum sealing any fruit. This is one of those containers that she saw in my pantry. Now, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I like to mix up organic cereals and come up with my own variety. But what she saw were these little dark things, and she said, I thought you weren't supposed to vacuum seal raisins. Shame on me. I did not write on the lid to tell me what it was. Now, I can look in here, and I can tell this is cereal. But the reason I didn't write on it is because this is short-term storage. I go through these one a week, and so I had put this in there intending to eat it pretty quickly. Probably one of the ingredients in there was soon to expire. But I want to open up this jar right now and show you what is in here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Right on the top, you can see there is something that looks like it could be a raisin. There's another one over there. These are actually blueberries. Let me see if I can turn it around and show you. That's the bottom of it. There you go. Right there is that classic blueberry shape. I'm gonna take this wooden spoon and show you what happens when you squish a blueberry. There you go. That's what I was hoping it would actually show you. This is completely dried. When you dehydrate your blueberries, it's not like a raisin. A raisin is still pliable. This dried blueberry was completely dried out. So what may have looked like raisins in my cereal was actually blueberries. So do I vacuum seal dehydrated fruits? Yes, I do. I do blueberries, I do strawberries, but they are completely 100% dried out. So how do I store my raisins? Honestly, I only buy them as I need them because these I just bought this week and look at that. It is only good until July, 2024. We're just talking a matter of months. Have I ever messed up and vacuum sealed something that did have raisins in and I wasn't aware? Absolutely. This is granola cereal. And what happened is it was in a plastic bag in a box. I never even thought twice. I brought it home, dumped it in here, vacuum sealed it. But then I realized it had raisins in it. And so what I did was I unvacuum sealed it and I keep this in my kitchen. We're gonna use this one first. But as far as the cereal that was in my pantry, this is blueberries, this is long-term. And what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna reseal it because I'm gonna put it back in my pantry. All right, now I'm gonna check that seal. It's on there good. 
And I'm gonna put this back into my pantry. And my pantry is a dark, cool space, so it actually will last for several years, but I'll be using this in the next couple weeks. Number two, coconut. This one had me stumped for a very long time. Originally, I did vacuum seal some of my coconut, but I didn't see any great advantages to it. It didn't extend it very long. But the main reason, I think there's just too much water content in coconut. If this coconut was completely crunchy dry, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but it is still pliable. For me, it's better to be safe than sorry. So no, I do not store my coconut by vacuum sealing. I keep my coconut in my cupboard in the original packaging and I just zip it closed at the top. Number three is brown sugar. Whoa, ho, ho. here's another controversial one. Brown sugar by its nature is soft, as you can see in this one. The problem is if you open it up to air, it's going to get dry very, very quickly. And when that happens, this is what you have a complete brick of brown sugar. Some people at that point will microwave it for a little. They'll heat it up. They'll put in a slice of bread. There's lots of ways to bring this back. So if you ever have hard brown sugar, don't throw it away. It's not ruined. Because of the moisture content in brown sugar, I refuse to vacuum seal it. I don't want any opportunity for something to get dry or hard or also to become dangerous. So for those two reasons, I do not store my brown sugar by vacuum. But then how can you store it so it doesn't get hard and it's usable when you need it? I use a brown sugar bear. Brown sugar bears are ceramic or clay. And what you do is you need to soak it in water for 20 minutes before you use it, which is kind of interesting because I found out a lot of people were putting them in their brown sugar, but they didn't know you had to soak it first. These bears are perfect for your brown sugar, but they're also wonderful for coconut and raisins. So let me show you how I store my brown sugar. The first thing you want is a quart jar, but you want a wide mouth. That way you can get your bear in there, you can get your scoop in there, so definitely use a wide mouth jar. Pour it into that jar, and you're gonna wanna fill it up. 24 ounce bag pretty much perfectly fits into that jar. Don't pack it down in there. I just let it fall where it fell. Soak your bear for 20 minutes and I just set him right on top and give him a little push. And this is one of the few times that I use a regular turning lid and I am gonna put that lid onto my brown sugar and it is ready. It will stay soft. My bear is gonna work for about three months at that point, I take him out and I soak him for another 20 minutes, dry him off and put him back. Number four is nuts. Many, many people vacuum seal their nuts and I have done that in the past. There's nothing harmful about it, but what happens is they become rancid. Nuts tend to have a lot of natural oils in them. So when you're looking at a package of nuts like this one, you're gonna look for that Best Buy date and you're gonna see that it is December, 2024. So I can vacuum seal these. They will be good until 2025. But if I instead vacuum seal it into a bag and put the bag in my freezer, it's going to last twice as long. So for me, I choose to store all my nuts in the freezer. Number five is potato chips. Oh my goodness, you eat potato chips? I thought you only eat organic. Hmm, let me tell you something, guys. It is very hard to be all in or all out because we are all human. And these are my absolute favorite, favorite chips. Uh, when I went to Martin's this week, which is the same as Giant, they were buy one, get one free. Woo-hoo! I don't vacuum seal any of my chips, especially the ones that are deep fried. First ingredient is potatoes. Yay, that's a good sign. But the next one is vegetable oil. That means they are fried potato chips. And anything that is fried can and will go rancid. That's why the Best Buy dates on these are very soon. It only goes until April. 
In the past, I did try to vacuum seal some of these because, well, hey, I really do like them, but they were not good. Uh, they were stale, they were rancid, they were gross. So for me, it doesn't make any sense to bother vacuum sealing chips. Instead, this is how I seal them. Foolproof, works, keeps them sealed. And number six, I do not vacuum seal spaghetti. Oh no, why can't you vacuum seal pasta? Oh, you can definitely vacuum seal pasta. And I do in fact vacuum seal it. What I don't vacuum seal anymore is spaghetti. And there's a simple reason why. It is a pain to vacuum seal because these boxes don't fit in any of my canning jars. So I had to break them into smaller pieces and it took forever. So for the sake of simplicity, I freeze it. It is so easy. I put it in a latch box and I simply stick the whole box into my freezer. And there you have it, six products that I refuse to vacuum seal. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.